What's up, y'all? Everybody hear my guitar okay? people coming in now so hopefully the audio is good I'm sure you'll let me know if it's not um so yeah uh people used to ask me a lot when i did the the store visits and doing clinics you know in stores they would always ask me like what's the the um number one thing to to know about on helix or what's the most important thing or most overlooked thing and all that and and uh and even when people say now like they can't get their he looks to sound good, uh, and they hear a recording, and they're like, you know, I can't get my helix to sound like that. And uh, I think the the most important thing that might get overlooked with the people that are new to helix is uh, just all the mic options that are available on here. So to me, that's probably the most important thing, um, and and what kind of sets the helix apart from kind of its predecessors and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna talk about the mics and the mic speaker relation today. Uh, and it's kind of uh, like something that applies to, I guess, even in, in a, with a real amp and microphone, uh, it's the same, same ideas, but uh, you know, it's just so cool that we can do it all virtually on Helix and kind of show you exactly what we're doing. I just kind of, Pulled up a real plain Jane preset here. I've got the uh, Brit Plexi. Let's see, I think it's on the bright. Yeah, so Brit Plexi bright. <laughs> Good, yeah, I agree. I got this Brit Plexi bright, and right now I'm just running the 4x12 uh, 25 watt green bag. Let's jump over here so you guys can see my editor. And uh, I did throw a little reverb on here. So we've got this dynamic hall just because it's such a good sound of reverb. I think it makes everything sound better. And the mic that's gonna be on this cabinet uh, when you pull it up, uh, and which is the mic I still have on here, is just this 57 dynamic mic. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about dynamic mics. <clears throat> um, and you can see it down here in the editor. And when you, when you first pull it up, it's kind of in this position, just outside, just a little bit, a cut an inch away from being right smack dab in the middle of the speaker. So first of all, the advantage of dynamic mics, first of all, you know, when you're playing live, that's going to be the, the normal go-to, like a 57 or maybe one of the Sennheiser's <clears throat> uh, guitar mics, and, uh, and they'll sound really good on here as well. But, you know, dynamic mics work really good in live situations, and they can take, basically the, what, I, what I've read when I was researching mics and stuff is that a dynamic mic is just built so they have such a robust construction that they can they can handle all the frequencies and all the volume <clears throat> coming out of a guitar amp and so and they sound good they, they capture a good overall uh, guitar sound now when it comes to placing these mics I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this thing right over so it's just right there in the middle of the speaker and I'm not sure how well it translates over the internet here that it picks up some of the high-end fizziness real quick even though I don't want to 
So if I move this mic over out of the center, so like maybe right here at the maybe two and a half, just the slightest little bit as I come away from the center of it, you may notice that some of that high end rolls off just a little bit. And right in the middle, definitely brighter. That to me is so much nicer actually because you, you lose, so, it smooths out the high end a little bit. And we can move it down a bit as well. Well, I say down, but I mean, it, it's already to the side, but down and a little bit farther away. Dramatic change just right there, just from being, uh, you know, not quite five inches away now. So, so I, I'm doing that just to kind of explain how putting the mic right in the middle of the speaker is not usually ideal. You want to put it over to the side like this because it'll it'll take off some of the harshness uh, from the top end. Now, the farther the mic gets away from the speaker itself, the more bottom end you're going to lose. Obviously, you'll, you'll lose some volume too. Get that reverb back on here. I like that reverb. Kind of compare that to another. Let's compare it to. Let's see this 906. Here. Kind of, but uh, I'm using a. You know, a, these dynamic mics are kind of literally intended to hang over a guitar. You know, you can you can run the cable under the handle of the guitar and drape it and let it hang right over the speaker, which I always like doing that when I played live a lot because um, I just didn't have to fool with a mic stand or anything. They really do they're, they're, they've got that square face that just hangs and lays right over the speaker. idea with the dynamic mics now moving on to a ribbon mic <clears throat> these are where you start to get much more nuanced um, guitar tones so like this 121 this is a staple great sounding mic for a guitar so the ribbon mics are, are really good for getting the overall guitar frequency uh, it's a little more tailored to to like a guitar frequency, especially this 121. Let's just compare the way that sounded compared to the 57 or the 609. Much darker already. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to probably I'm gonna move it a little closer. And it's got such a more smooth sound you know you, we've lost all that harshness from the top end a whole lot 
smoother of a sound. Now, of course, uh, it's a bit quieter, so we can just turn the level up a bit down here. Uh, and then, you know, when you change a, a, a mic like that, you may want to adjust your guitar sound a little bit too. Like, like maybe turn the treble up just a little bit more. Although I, I normally like a dark sound like that. I think a lot of people would like to hear a little more of the top end. <laughs> dramatic that is um let's compare it to the 160 <laughs> right off the bat you can tell there's like a touch more mid-range uh in this amp it's it's subtle but you can definitely hear it at least you can in the room <laughs> mic on like a 45 degree angle or just take it off axis so when I click on the 45 degree you can see how the mic turns at a 45 degree angle the reason behind doing something like this is again um, to kind of smooth out some of the harshness that you would get uh, in the high end it also keeps uh, <laughs> the way I've read it and understand it if I can say it properly is it kind of takes the edge off of just the whole, the, the entire wall of sound coming out of the amp from just hitting the mic directly on. So it kind of, uh, this kind of helps take care of the ribbons, the actual ribbon mic. You know? yeah, I'm going to turn my volume up on the Helix just a bit. You'll let me know if it's too loud or if it's peaking or anything. zero degrees
Pick up again. Back to a humbucker. idea there for ribbon mics um, and that whole idea of doing the 45 degree angle uh, I'm gonna jump over to the dynamic mic again and show you the difference in the 45 degree and straight on with that one as well I went back to this loud uh, dynamic mic it sounds pretty good it's more aggressive sounding I guess because it, it picks up more of the higher end <laughs> degree angle five degree angle and pull it back a bit to uh, condenser mics now uh, actually there was one other ribbon mic I think I wanted to talk about <clears throat> this 4038 um, it's gonna be darker still so we did the 121 and the 160 and you can see they progressively got got darker sounding so let's go back to the 121 real quick <laughs> Now, check out this um, 4038. This one is like the darkest of all the ribbon mics, at least to me it, it sounds that way. I'll move it a little closer. Got a lot of bottom end, for whatever reason, you know, that's just how that one's made. <laughs> Set that I use with solid state amp, and I use the 4038 uh, because it's just so dark sounding. So, I, and I really like that sound a lot of times, especially for like a, a clean guitar tone, which obviously I'm not using right now, but I could clean this up a bit. Quieter. <laughs>
Okay, so there you go, 4038, very dark uh, ribbon mic. <clears throat> now let's go over here to condenser mics. These are kind of the, the most preferred mics for recording, um, just because they make up the most amount of like the subtle nuances, highs and lows. For golly, that sounds so good. <laughs> At least in the room it does. It may not sound good where you guys are. Um, so I've never, let's see, I've never had a problem uh, going direct. So uh, in fact, I've usually, I usually get, you know, the, the opposite. I usually have sound guys that mention to me um, that it sounds really good live. So let's see, sounds great. Audio interface, when you go direct to PA, that's when the problem starts. Yeah, I haven't had that issue um, going direct into a PA, so I'm not sure um what what your main problem is there when you go into the PA but I will mention that you know as soon as you go into a board or going through a PA the 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 control is no longer 100% you at that point you know you're at the mercy of first of all some other person that's running sound and then it depends on what what kind of PA speakers you're going through um what kind of settings are in the board I know I, <laughs> I've had to like really do some serious convincing before to to just kind of let guys know like hey I don't need a compressor on this um set the EQ to a flat you know mostly flat EQ of course it's going to vary from one PA system to the other but you know uh typically I, I want a, mo a fairly flat EQ and you you want to make sure the gain on that channel in your PA is turned down fairly low too. If your gain is set too high, you're definitely going to have problems. Uh, and then, as far as things like compression and anything else, you get you gotta, you know, let them know like you need to start with the raw guitar tone and then doctor it up after you are totally convinced that it doesn't sound good through the board. Uh, and I'll tell you something else when I'm when I'm playing live, and I'm just using a Helix. Uh, I'll take advantage of the fact that I can use condenser mics and ribbon mics and not just dynamic mics because, you know, if you can get a studio quality sound in a live setting, then why don't you, you know? So just uh, just my two cents when it comes to issues you may have when you're going into the board. I don't have that issue. Usually it's not an issue. Uh, it, it may take a little bit of communication between me and the engineer um, or just getting used to whatever PA you're going through. Uh, I've played through a lot of different PAs, and uh, it's usually pretty much the same. I mean, there have been times when it didn't sound too good, but it was not something on my end. It was just something with the PA, either not a good system or just somebody running it didn't know what they were doing, or they're just obsessed with putting stuff on the guitar sound. <laughs> it's like, oh, I have this compressor. I might as well use it. Like, you really don't have to. And make sure your gain is just low because you don't you don't need a lot of gain from the board when you're coming in from the helix. Well, moving on, we got we're doing this 67 condenser, and I think I've got this guy yeah tilted at 45 degrees. That's just about the most smooth sounding guitar sound you can get. I'm gonna go back to a little more of the sound I had going earlier. Higher gain. Turn my drive back up. I'm on the humbucker in the neck position, and I've got this. Uh, um, I've got this 67 condenser mic going. Here. Pick up. 
uh, go to the, let's see, maybe do a little single coil. Check out a different condenser mic. Let's try this 47. Uh, this one sounds really good. It all sound good, but I'm pretty fond of this one. Yourself play the same licks over and over or playing in the same key. I, I just hit that threshold. JI, thanks, thanks, JI. And Helix is winning, yeah. I think so, man. Um, let's see, put this guy on the zero degree. To me, that just sounds juicy as all get out. Oh, let's see here. Let's see. So, interesting question here from Zach. Tony, question live sound. Do you have a preference for either the Line 6 Power Cab Plus or the Line 6 Soundscape uh, L3T? Um, <laughs> personally, I, I, I dig the Power Cabs. It, you know, I assume you mean if you're using the soundscape to monitor your guitar. Um, and I, I have had some instances where I was using one of those and it did sound pretty good, but it was uh, it was in a real controlled environment. It was like at a trade show where we had everything set up for a few days and uh, I had gotten really used to it. I don't have a lot of experience live playing through those um, for a guitar monitor or a guitar sound like that. Um, I do have a lot of experience using the power cab and uh, to me the power cab is just wins all day I, I just like the the way they're built like a guitar cabinet and um, you know they've just, they've got all the different speaker IRs built in so you can save DSP on your helix um, you can change on, on a whim just you know it, it something about when you use a, a the power cab as a speaker, like you said, a speaker IR, it moves air a little more realistically. Um, I think it sounds good either way, but the, the power cab just has a, a, a nice dynamic live feel um, as far as how it moves air. So, you know, my preference is the power cab, but I've had good experiences with both. So that's a good question, though. Um, okay, before I get out of here because I know I'm going I'm in danger of going over I'm gonna jump over here and just talk a little bit about this feature that I really love you'll notice that I just added a dual speaker setup here so basically when you have the dual setup and you see this little link symbol here um, you'll notice right now it's unlinked then I click it and it's linked when you do that it's basically like you have one cabinet with two separate mics now this is where you get the ultimate uh <laughs> guitar tone to me so you'll notice right now i've got you know the we're back to the dynamic because when you reset it it just goes back to its factory default so i'm gonna pull my 57 over just a little bit like we talked about in fact maybe i want to turn it on its uh five degree angle now i've got that just aggressive raw guitar tone. Now I'm gonna go over here to my other one. And remember, this is essentially like we're using two different uh, mics on one cabinet. So now that I'm on this one, I'm gonna jump over here to one of these juicy sounding condenser mics, maybe this 47. And now we've got uh, basically a blended sound of the two mics. 
So you bought another you bought another modeler and the difference was huge. Well, I'm I'm very curious. No problems for me, man. So, you know, maybe to each his own, but uh I've just never had a problem uh with a live sound. Uh I've used I've used several different modelers uh on the market just from either recording sessions or or demoing stuff, just doing like some recon and stuff. And um, yeah, some of them I'm not as crazy about, and some of them I think sound good, but I won't name any names. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, sounds EVH-esque. <laughs> Thanks, J.I. Yeah, it does sound really cool when you can blend the two mics together on one have. In fact, uh, I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to even see if I can get a bit more of a harsh tone out of that 57. On, uh, just because the condenser mic is compensating for a lot of that. kind of have an EVH sound uh, even though I don't play like EVH at all but I, I kind of I see what you mean about the tone I mean you know if we use the jump plexi it'll sound even more so let's see here <laughs> Plexi going, it's it's super aggressive. kind of in that in that <clears throat> happy place where I've got a tone dialed in that I'm digging and I'm just having fun with it so you guys don't have to sit here and listen to me anymore <laughs> so I'll throw this minotaur in here too we just get even more a more killer sound <laughs> with it man but I, I'm, I'm enjoying that I did I did very minimal work to this tone by the way I just kind of threw some stuff in there so I could demo these mics this this new update I've said it a lot I know but uh, 3.5 is just a, a, a game changer well thanks J.I. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, guys, I'm going over. I'm having too much fun. I'm just uh, just playing some guitar. So, uh, and that's the main thing about Helix is it sounds good, so you have fun. And once you start having fun with it, and you have to make yourself stop, then you know, you know things are going good. Um, appreciate the kind words there, you guys. I uh, got a new single out that I released last Friday. So, um, yeah, guys, go check that out on Spotify or Amazon or iTunes or wherever you stream music. So. Uh, Check that out. I'll appreciate it. Um, you can stick a fork in me. I'm done for the day. Thank you guys for sticking around and hanging out. Um, I'm glad you glad you hung with me. Hope you enjoyed it. And I uh, hope you guys are having fun out there with your Helix. I will catch y'all on the flip side. Peace out. <laughs>